Hey, what's good guys? This is Chris from weartesters.com. Welcome to the official weartesters.com YouTube channel. Today we have a performance review on these guys right here. This is the Nike Kyrie Flytrap. This is a signature shoe for Kyrie, but it's a budget model. Some people get triggered over the budget term. They do not like that term. It's just a term. There's nothing wrong with being budget friendly. It's awesome actually. You save money. <laughs> So these guys right here have an interesting traction pattern and it works beautifully. I think it's more so the rubber than the pattern itself because this is not quite an aggressive look. It's very flat on top of that. So every single line or groove that you have on here is not peaked and normally peaked traction or like sharp traction really bites well. This on the other hand, again, it's the rubber. The rubber compound on these guys just is beast. And this had fantastic traction on every surface that I played on, indoors, outdoors, dirty, clean, whether the finish of the floor was crappy or whether it was brand spanking new it didn't even matter these things just well, they were surprising honestly definitely something that i think is interesting being that these are a budget model because a budget model you just automatically think i think the connotation is just that it's a lower value being that's maybe why people don't like being called budget things but like you know because of that the rubber for some reason is just better i don't know why because like I mean, we have shoes that cost a lot more and the rubber sucks these though these just use really good rubber it's durable on top of that so you can use these outdoors they will last you not a long ass time but they'll last you long enough and again if you use them indoors i just didn't have a problem with them i was super surprised with them if you were to compare these with the Kyrie 5 traction somehow these are better I don't know how but I mean they just are the cushion however the cushion sucks man I mean just there's no way around it it's firm as hell I actually really liked the cushion on the flytrap ones it was the same exact setup and that is a phylon midsole with a little teeny tiny hex unit right there in the forefoot something that we've been used to seeing in something like the older Kobe models although those were met bags those were not hex units and they were awesome those were like super thick these are are very thin very tiny you can't feel them the the last model though, the Phylon in them was a lot softer, a lot more forgiving. So to me, the original Flytrap felt very good underfoot despite it being a pretty much cushionless sneaker. This guy right here was the exact opposite. I mean, it just knees hurting inside outside especially outside and that kind of sucks because this shoe would be a great shoe for outdoor hoopers again it's durable the traction was great the rubber was firm and it is under budget but the cushion man the cushion you cannot play outdoors long term with no cushion you just can't it's not good for you now the materials are interesting they are pretty nice they feel a little bit nicer than the original fly trap they feel a lot more rugged as well they don't feel as cheap the original ones felt cheap although they weren't according to the designer which he hit me up and was just like hey they're not actually cheap blah blah all that stuff which is cool thank you for that these guys right here they feel just a little bit more premium i guess in comparison to that one it just feels thicker it feels a little bit more sturdy and they played that way too the material stretched less and it didn't move as much although it moved plenty because it is a fabric so it was able to move with your foot without a lot of breaking time and it was pretty durable as well you do have some fuse on there in the high wear areas just in case but overall i think the materials especially for the price the entry level price is very good now the fit on these guys is interesting they do fit true to size but these joints are mad narrow dude and like i like a nice snug fit but holy sh these things these things were really tight bro i'm just saying the last one was super weird because the last fly trap the originals were hella wide like those things i was yanking them up like crazy and they were just folding and buckling in weird ass ways great for wide footers this is the exact opposite this would be great for somebody who's got feet like kd or something because like these things can fit a hockey stick but not really a foot some people are going to want to go up half a size i don't recommend that unless you really really need to just because the way that the shoe is kind of sculpted it's got that rounded tooling which i don't like but it does have that so if you have that and you have a little bit of extra room you could shift on movements when you're not supposed to or when you're not trying to possibly resulting in an injury so what i would do is go true to size if they just don't fit you just pass on them all together the lockdown on the shoe is pretty good very standard though the throat or the lacing area is just very you know normal nothing special the laces do a great job of pulling your foot down in each section that you need as well as the top eyelets they really draw yourself into the rear of the shoe keeping on the footbed which is what that little tpu heel counter is there for as well when you're moving it doesn't allow you to move over the footbed or the midsole these also have the elastic band at the midfoot right there just like the originals did and i didn't notice it whatsoever i don't know why it's really there because it doesn't seem to do much but it is there i wish it was gray like so it didn't stick out like a yeah, sore thumb because it just makes me want you to put the laces on top of it that's the part is that i, I think it's weird that the laces run under it because the last one it was the other way around although like that definitely like bunched so maybe that's why it's on top it's an interesting addition and it didn't do anything that's the thing is if it's not there 
there for a function, it probably shouldn't be there. It looks like you could just take the laces out now and wear them casually. Like it would they would probably it feel foot. better because <laughs> they're very tight. The support on the shoe is okay, nothing crazy. I don't know if there's a midfoot bar or shank in there. I would assume so, but I'm not really sure. I haven't seen these cut open or anything, and you know, so I can't really tell you. There is an external and internal heel counter on there, so the rear support is definitely there, which is nice. And again, the overall fit and everything, as long as you get the shoe or size that fits you right, then you're going to be good to go. There's not much of an outrigger. It's rounded. Again, I don't like this tooling a lot. Although every time I did play in them, like I played really well and I shot really well, but I do personally prefer something that a little bit flatter, a little bit wider, a little bit more stable. This is definitely tuned for that player that is very quick on their feet, that wants to change direction or needs to change direction without a moment's notice, which is not me. People think that I'm fast for some reason. I don't know why. You like, run in circles. Well, I'm trying to get open. You know what I mean? As a, as a shooter, as a spot up shooter, you just don't stand there. You know what I'm saying? Like you have to bob and weave and you have to move through screens and which is why I personally like a wider, flatter tooling because when you're doing that and then all of a sudden the ball is in your hands, you got to be able to set your feet up and get up for a shot real quick. And that to me is very important when you have a nice wide setup. This right here is great for the mobility aspect, but as soon as I go to plant my feet to shoot, I just whoop, you know, and I don't like that initial rock feeling and stuff like that. But if you're just a ball handler or if you're somebody that's just lashing and all that stuff, this might be like the perfect thing for you. If you like feeling fast and mobile, this is your guy right here. And a lot of people are like, oh, they should make shoes for like specific styles of play. They do. You got to know why things are there. This shoe, for example, is a guard shoe. Anybody can wear it as long as this suits their needs, whether they're a guard or a big or whatever. And then if you compare something like the Curry, another guard shoe, they're two different styles of shoes. The Curry is always a stability guard shoe. The Kyrie's is always a speedy guard shoe. You just have to know what you're looking for, what you're looking at. And that's what you're looking at here. This, the roundedness, the very slim kind of nature, especially in the forefoot. This is for a quick player who's always moving and needs to move quickly on a dime when they're not moving. Whereas the Curry or something like that, where it's a little bit wider, you'll get a little bit of a slower step, but the pro to that is that you get enhanced stability, especially for someone like me where I need it right from the jump. She's about to go out there and start balling. She ain't never played a day in her life, but she's gonna be like, I know exactly what I need. I'm gonna go out there. I got two left feet. I got this. I'm gonna... Balling. So overall, I do like the shoe. I just think that the cushion is garbage, unless these are exactly what you're looking for. The one pro to this is if you're comparing it to the current Kyrie, a lot of people are complaining about the traction on that shoe. This guy right here does not have that same issue. So if you like a shoe that's built for Kyrie, you like that speedy shoe, and you want the newest version of it, this might do you a little bit better than the Kyrie 5, just kind of depends. I did feel like the traction on these was a bit better than those. At the same token, the cushion on the Kyrie 5 was a little bit better. Actually, that's like an understatement. And those don't even have a lot of cushion. <laughs> but the cushion that they do have is way better than these things. So it just kind of is a give or take depending on what you exactly need out of your shoes. If you like that firm setup and you like a lot of traction, you like a nice close snug fit, this shoe right here might be exactly what you're looking for. If any of those things are not what you're looking for, definitely look past them and go for something else. That pretty much takes care of it for these guys. If you need any more information, you can head over to weartesters.com. The link is in the description box below. You'll be able to find their price, their weight, their scores. If you have any more questions that I did not answer specifically in this video or in the written write-up let me know down below in the comment section and i'll try to get back to you as soon as possible thank you so much for watching thanks for all your support and until next time guys have a good one how big is the cushion bag like oh it's, it's it's literally that big it's like the size of a quarter yeah it's this little thing right here i thought it was like you the thought whole it was like nah teal I, part. oh you thought it was that no that's deceptive you you want to complain about it on one side because it sucked but at the other end it was a cheaper shoe and it's a bummer because the main thing with stuff like this is like it's great for those people that go into a famous footwear or dicks or whatever and for some reason they're just unaware that outlets exist but like you can really go to an outlet and what was this? No, this is the wrong box. Oops. Um, but <laughs> these things are what, $79 retail? And you can go to an outlet and get something that originally costs way more. It might be like last year's model, but you can get something that costs way more, has way more tech specs. Prime example, the last time I was at the mall, they had the Why Not Zero One Low Tops. Full length zoom, okay? Great sneaker, maybe not the most durable as far as traction, but great sneaker. And those things were, I think starting price was $79 and then there was an additional 30% off. I mean, that's a steal because like you can you can buy this. It's, it's a good price if you want something brand, brand new. But if you don't mind getting last year's model, I mean, there's nothing that you can't get at the outlet that costs same or less and is better. That's all I'm saying. It's super weird. Like if you really think about it, it's like, what is the point of this? It's hard because 
I mean, it just takes you back to being in school. You don't want to have the lesser of something when it's not even it seems everybody else has the newest and greatest. Yeah, I get it. To me, though, like if we're talking about bang for your buck, so maybe that's an old person thing. Like, I think it's something you have to learn over time. Yeah, I think I think maybe that's when you like start like having your own money and whatever. But for whatever reason, again, like the value here to me, even though the retail price is affordable, I just don't find the value there in the cushion alone.